now it's running on the video. Yes, uh, welcome to my talk uh, about uh, source to source transformations with Clang. Just a note to myself, I am Olaf Schikala. Uh, I am a research assistant at the Center for Information Services and High Performance Computing, which is a research unit of the Technical University of Dresden. And today I'm going uh, to tell you something about um, source to source transformation. Um, in particular about uh, the transformation of the abstract syntax tree of the of Clang. Um, I will abbreviate it uh, occasionally with est. I hope you get the term then. That's what I mean this abstract syntax tree. Um, what I, am I going to talk in detail? Uh, at the first point I need uh, some sort of disclaimers or a fine print. Uh, because uh, maybe you know uh, the abstract syntax tree of Clang is actually immutable and uh, they will tell you this and maybe uh, some of them are among us here. Doug Gregor, for instance, uh, uh, will be very aware of uh, transformations of the abstract syntax tree. Actually it is not allowed. That's why I will need some fine print at the beginning. Uh, in the second uh, section, I will uh, introduce two components, two central components of our solution. In the third section, then I will uh, pick some uh, questions that were raised on the mailing list, on the uh, Clang developer mailing list from time to time. And I will uh, introduce our current solutions to these questions. And uh, in the end, I will conclude with some uh, prospects about uh, future developments. Okay, let's start with the disclaimers or some sort uh, of this. Uh, first, what is this talk not about? This talk is not about the pros and cons of source, source transformation in general. Uh, last year, Ronan Carriel, who sits in front here, uh, had held a lightning talk in San Jose. Yes, in San Jose, about uh, the, all the strategic uh, topics around source to source transformation. Why you can do it, why you should do it, in which case you shouldn't do it. So, uh, today I will not talk about this overall picture, I will dive quickly deep into C code. The second disclaimer I already told you, uh, we transform the abstract syntax tree of Clang, which is actually not allowed. Um, I have to emphasize that all the code which I present here actually works. It is a code that is in production and I will uh, shortly introduce the project for which this code is used. Nevertheless, um, a lot of this code can break rather easily. It works for the things it is intended to work, but it may not work for other things. We will see later and I will uh, uh, mention this in particular. Um, all the code you can download at uh, this URL. I give it later in bigger letters again. And uh, it is open source. It's a BSD style license as used in research projects. Well, a last uh, point I want to uh, state here. Uh, the project from which this code originated started in 2009. Uh, Clang has hugely evolved since that. And uh, there are, especially for some things, which I don't present here, but which you might find in the package here, in the source code package, uh, for some of these things, there are meanwhile better approaches in Clang, built in Clang. Or even uh, things that I have built for myself are now, uh, have now entered Clang. Okay, just to get a pic uh, to give you a big picture uh, uh, of the originating project of my talk today, uh, this is uh, what we need source to source transformation for. We had uh, developed or have developed a vectorizing source to source transformator. Here you see the on the uh, right side. This is a graphical user interface. Uh, here you see on the right side. The uh, original, loop, uh, original loop, which is annotated with a pragma. 
And then on the left side, uh, sorry, this is the right side. On the right side, the English left side. Uh, <laughs> on, the, uh, on this side, you see the vectorized loop. For instance, uh, here you have uh, um, a loop which is hugely transformed uh, from this, while the residual loop, which uh, computes some uh, residual lanes, which could not be computed here, if maybe if this is not 100 part 99, then you have uh, three additional uh, iterations at the end. Uh, this is uh, merely the same uh, body as here, but only the initial initialization clause is missing here. So that is a big picture, which I don't want to talk about today. I don't want about talk about uh, vectorization today. If you are interested in that, then you can come with it and we can uh, talk about this. I have also a uh, scout on my laptop here and we can play around with this later on. Um, I want to talk about today about this uh, bold arrow here. Um, these are the components. You see here the clang and you see uh, the LLVM. We don't care about this part here, about the LLVM part. We care about the lexer, the parser of clang, the abstract syntax tree in particular, and how we process it. In Scout, we have an, uh, I call it S processing library which does all sort of uh, S, uh, abstract syntax tree transforming. You can uh, clone in a tree, you can uh, uh, transform it by changing, you can create new nodes. <coughs> and uh, this unit uh, does things like function inlining on uh, source level, it does loop unswitching. Uh, maybe you already, you all have heard uh, Chandler's talk about missing loop transformations and some of these are built into this uh, unit here. And we also have uh, another component here which passes pragmas. And actually I wanted to uh, introduce uh, our approach, uh, how we pass expressions inside pragmas. But uh, there's another talk today, uh, tomorrow, from Simone, which also sits in front of here. and. Uh, he has a much more elaborated and much major approach about this, so I omit this in my talk and recommend you Simone's talk then tomorrow for this. Okay, so let's uh, plunge deep into C++ code now. Let's look what, uh, how we uh, create our abstract syntax tree and how we change existing abstract syntax trees. Uh, our central uh, class is, uh, our central interface is, well, rather unoriginal, called a statement editor. And it is a central interface, it provides a lot of functions to create variables, expressions, and statements. Maybe you see here in the first group, uh, we create a binary operator expressions, then we can create a reference expressions to variables. Here you have uh, functions to create literals and uh, you also can create uh, new variable declarations. Um, whenever I, you see such a blue uh, picture of code, I give you uh, in the line below the code uh, the path where you find, where you find the source file in the code package of Scout, so that you can check that this is a, a code from production. So this is uh, from the statement editor uh, header file, uh, an excerpt, of course. Okay, how can you use this interface? I have uh, given you here an example which I uh, extracted from the loop blocking uh, algorithm of uh, Scout. And you see it is um, to a certain degree uh, rather easily uh, to read and uh, rather convenient to use. Um, what we have here, we, have, uh, uh, we start with a, with a loop, with a, yes, with, with a for statement uh, called node. We create uh, three temporary variables and we have an inner uh, loop body. Uh, with these uh, two assignment uh, operators and finally we have an inner 
uh, loop body which uh, uh, iterates over the inner block. Uh, you use this kind of transformations uh, if you optimize for uh, certain cache architectures, uh, for instance. And this is how it looks like. Uh, this is your original code. And this is then the code, uh, uh, the resulting uh, target code. And if you, I have uh, give you here in the comments also the lines for how it looks like. But uh, in the end, I think it's uh, rather easily to recognize. This is temp bound uh, minus i bound minus loop for is temp bound, and so on. Okay, so. That was the easy part. There was where two things were missing until now. The first question is uh, how is statement editor implemented? How is it back up with implementation? And the second part, which I left out here, is that in this four body uh, it iterates over i, where in this four body it iterates over the variable temp and this new introduced uh, temp variable. And of course, you have to replace in this four body then the original i occurrences of i with temp meaning uh, you have to mutate the abstract syntax tree which will enter the true minefield but more on this later uh, the first thing is how is a statement editor implemented i have given you here the example of the implementation of the if statement and it's uh, rather easily uh, implemented it's to some uh, degree very uh, naive uh, naive implementation I just uh, return the new uh, uh, a new generated if statement if you look at Zema if you look at Zema then you will find out that this implementation is actually the same in Zema the creation of an if statement is augmented with some diagnostics and there is an, a special handling of uh, uh, declared variables inside a uh, condition here. But uh, if you don't have the special case of the declared variable in a condition, then uh, Zema does actually the same. Or of course, it does not use uh, uh, no pos uh, helper here, but it actually uses uh, those positions. Um, okay, now uh, let's leave the statement level and let's enter the expression level. And uh, to put it in a picture, uh, once you enter the expression level, then all hell breaks loose. You know, um, this is our current implementation of the binary operator. And if you look at if, uh, well, better you should not very look too closely. At it. It's very naive, naive, and uh, it works for the things. Uh, it should work for the things we have tested it, but it does not work uh, for uh, in a general level. At a general level, you know, you have um, actually to handle all the implicit costs. You have to compute uh, the proper result heap from uh, the left-handed and the right-handed uh, side of the expression, which gets even more complicated if you have a compound assignment operator, and so on and so on. Uh, we didn't care about all this. We just uh, tried this. And for our, uh, for our purposes, it worked. We could even then deliver this uh, code or this uh, generated abstract syntax tree to uh, the evaluation or to the static analyzer of Clang and it worked. It, didn't, it did not assert. Um, however, you should not try this at home. Actually, it, it, much, it would be necessary to redirect this task to Zema, where it all already is implemented. Already all this stuff is already implemented there, but we haven't done this yet. We have, haven't yet uh, re redirected it to Zema. Okay, the second point was uh, uh, how do I change abstract syntax tree nodes? Again, as, at, as long as you are on the statement level, then there's no problem. 
For instance, we have a function in our statement editor uh, which takes a compound statement as a parent statement and replaces all statements inside the compound statement by a new uh, array of uh, statements. This uh, function works like a charm and uh, there's no invariant uh, violates uh, which is violated by this uh, uh, by the implementation of this, which is a rather naive implementation. Uh, however, I was also in need of a general purpose replacement and um, where this statement from and, and the statement new statement uh, uh, could be of any kind. Maybe also an expression, where from is an expression and then uh, the new statement should be an expression too. And again, uh, this was more difficult. Uh, first, if you look at the code, we have to uh, we maintain a parent map internally uh, by statement editor for this kind of uh, transformations. And if you replace expressions with other expressions here, then you might get uh, so then you might find out that uh, some things don't work anymore if you evaluate it or if you deliver it to the static analyzer then you might get uh, make get, uh, assertions. Anyway, as I already stated, all this code here is nevertheless in production and uh, one, things, uh, one thing I want to uh, emphasize here is that Clang can actually do this kind of transformations. Yeah? We are not at the level where we can say this is bulletproof code, yeah? but we can do it. Yes? And I will later talk about uh, possibilities uh, how we can make it bulletproof. Okay, just leaving the minefields and uh, I want to talk about another uh, class, a little helper class, um, which I uh, found uh, very uh, useful for my uh, for my day-to-day -day work uh, on uh, traversing and editing abstract syntax tree nodes. Um, and it, I want to start with a recursive est visitor, which uh, some of you might already know. If you have uh, abstract, syntax tree, abstract syntax trees like this one, a compound statement consisting of some four statements, and in the four statements there's a, in the condition here you have a binary expression, you have a unary expression, and the, one of the four statement bodies has a binary expression again and so on. And now you want to uh, process some something, you want analyze or something like that, all four statements. Then you can derive from a recursive S visitor, put the compound statement or any root here in and you get a call uh, for every four statement. Same is true for every other uh, S type node, S, uh, type of S node. For instance, for, the bina for binary expressions, or if you want to uh, process uh, on all expressions, then you can uh, overwrite the visit expression uh, function instead of the visit binary expression <coughs> function, and you can you catch all expressions in your abstract syntax tree. What's even better, you can do it all at once, that is, if you have a class which is derived from recursive est visitor and you want to process something on the four statements and you also want something processing on the expression then you can do it in one pass. Just uh, overwrite the visit for statement and the visit expression uh, uh, functions and you get it all at once. Um, one thing is uh, this uh, visitor uses uh, cur curiously recursive template pattern which means that you need uh, to subclass uh, this uh, visitor uh, actua to actually get some functionality. And this is sometimes a little bit uh, clumsy, or at least I found it. And uh, that's why I implemented an iterator, which um, more or less is a forward iterator or resembles the interface of the uh, well-known forward iterator concept. And the template type here uh, gives you, uh, or is a hint, which uh, for which uh, 
type of S node uh, it actually should search. So if you have here the root is our compound statement for instance uh, again and now you can write this uh, code and you get uh, all four statements inside the tree which is originated by uh, root. Um, this is, uh, or at least in my humble opinion, uh, this is uh, a little bit more handy than the recursive S visitor and you can it use uh, as usual in uh, code without subclassing it. Um, of course there's one downside, it can only process one uh, class per traversal, that is you can process all the four statements in one traversal and then you need another traversal to process all the expressions. Yes. Another thing, it just handles uh, statement types. It doesn't go further down to declarations and type uh, declarations, uh, which as a recursive S visitor actually does. Okay, so I'm finished with my two main components here and I want to switch over to uh, to present some uh, solutions or to present uh, small, rather small solutions to some uh, questions that were or are raised on the developer mailing list from time to time. And I want to start with a very popular question. Uh, is there a facility in Clang which is capable of cloning uh, parts of an abstract syntax tree? Um, Actually, cloning uh, is actually uh, is very important uh, for a lot of tasks. For instance, if you want to inline a function or if you want to unroll a loop, then you uh, uh, use cloning on a very regular base. And um, we have implemented a known uh, solution back in 2009, which has this uh, template class and then it is derived from the statement visitor and the implementation is actually very simple again. It just uh, recursively uh, traverses down the abstract syntax tree and generates a uh, new node. New node. The problem here is, um, is that uh, the implementation is uh, rather volatile. Whenever there's a new uh, abstract syntax tree class added, uh, then we have to uh, refactor the cloning and uh, sometimes you also need uh, these kind of lines uh, which makes uh, uh, maintenance rather unhandy. In my humble opinion, there's now there's a facility in Clang which is capable of clone, uh, uh, of cloning an abstract syntax tree and it is tree transform. Um, Actually, you only have to derive from tree transform and the always rebuild function should return true. I have not tested this code, but it should work. That is, after you have uh, generated a statement clone back for, uh, from a tree transform and this is an important part, you return true and always rebuild and then you call transform, you get a new or a cloned uh, tree. <coughs> this is however untested code. But I think uh, this is a way to go for the future. Okay, um, you already see one class here which I will t uh, talk about now. This is a rather mystical tree transform uh, which uh, also appears from time to time on the uh, mailing list and the question is always how do I use a tree transform? Um, I give you a, a small example here. Uh, I want to transform this uh, operation to this operation and I tried this uh, using my naive approach or my naive approaches uh, generating binary expressions but it never worked out. Uh, I got all sorts of failures. I got uh, these uh, R value to L value conversions uh, from and I, uh, I got the result types from. Um, in the end I decided to put some effort in this uh, problem and to use tree transform and 
Um, well, I succeeded, but it took me uh, away and uh, there were several obstacles and I will talk about these now. The first one is uh, tree transform is in a rather odd place. The include looks uh, like this because uh, tree transform never moved to the interface. I hope uh, that this will change in the future and maybe if we uh, uh, if you generate enough evidence that tree transform is actually very useful for uh, for users outside of uh, the internal Clang structure, then we get them to move it to the interface. Okay. Uh, the next uh, thing, uh, tree transform needs SEMA. And if you uh, use the AST consumer framework, then you will notice that you actually don't have SEMA uh, right now. What you need is a SEMA consumer and not an S consumer. That is, uh, you have to derive uh, from SEMA consumer instead of uh, S consumer if you want to uh, use a tree transform, uh, for instance, in your handle translation unit. I have solved this by uh, uh, by saving the compiler instance in a reference here, uh, it's a construction, and then I need these two uh, functions here to get the Zema into the compiler instance, and once I have it there, I can use it here in the handle translation unit. This was one of the obstacles getting Zema uh, to this function. Uh, another, fun another problem, uh, how do we actually perform the transformation. Again, I said always rebuild here to true because I, A, the, the expression here uh, is cloned, yes, and then I use some sort uh, to transform. Uh, this is an internal function I don't give you here, it's just a switch, switch, a switch case to get the, oper the, uh, the proper operator code. Then I clone the A here we build the binary operator as, uh, with a new calculated uh, uh, binary operator, which is, for instance, a plus. And in the end, I use the I generate the assignment. And this works. Uh, actually, it does not fire all the assertions that the naive approach by generating it by hand uh, um, that fire. But this is a code how it should work. Okay, so um, we have this ready. You try this out and you find out yeah, it works, but there are some diagnostics now firing. And this was the last obstacle by using, uh, in using Zema. Uh, Zema did not know about the context. You have to care about the context where Zema thinks it is. Uh, if A is a variable, then it might uh, fire an error that A is uh, undeclared in this context. So you have to put SEMA in the right context. Um, we, uh, in the Scout project, actually always uh, compute or transform abstract syntax trees on the function level. That is, we take a rule function, transform it, transform the function body, and then rewrite it. So for our purposes, it was enough to use this line here and uh, put SEMA in the context of the function. And then all the, uh, all the diagnostics disappeared and the code worked uh, very well from this on. Okay, you find all this stuff here in analyze.cpp in the source code package. That's the fine thing about open source. Okay, one last question, uh, uh, which uh, sometimes is asked at the mailing list, uh, how do I merge uh, several AST, several abstract syntax tree together? Um, we came up with uh, two different solutions uh, for this cast. The first one is rather easy. If you have uh, an, a source file, or let's say if you have some text, you want to pass, then you can just include all the other files uh, just before this text, like here, 
then you put a line R1 here uh, just before your actual source code so you get the diagnostic at the right place and well actually that's already is, is the trick it does a trick for uh, things like for in instance uh, function inlining where you need the function bodies uh, uh, for the inlining and uh, the downside here is that you need the uh, same language settings. That is, you can't mix C and C++ code, for instance. You can only use all C or all C++ code here. Um, the second way is uh, means uh, built-in Clang. That's a class called est importer, and uh, this importer can be used to uh, import uh, little code snippets and. Uh, for instance, in uh, Scout, we use it to import uh, code snippets, uh, codes uh, extracted from C++ files to C files. So the way to include uh, the things didn't work at this uh, particular um, uh, for this particular uh, task. Okay, how does it? How does uh, the est importer works? Um, you have to create it. And you need a source abstract syntax tree, which comes from a Scout specific class named configuration. I just uh, tell you how it gets the abstract syntax tree context and the file manager. And then your target abstract syntax tree you can get from the compiler instance uh, you all normally have. And now the, f the question is where comes uh, uh, what uh, about this configuration class um, here was uh, the problem to get a persistent uh, context and a persistent file manager from the source compiler uh, which you normally uh, have in a, have done or which you normally have created in a separate compilation step so this uh, you have a uh, separate uh, abstract syntax tree consumer and you have your handle translation unit and where you create your abstract syntax tree uh, and at the end you have to you have to uh, save the context and the file manager and these two lines are very important because here you can set the context and the file manager to the configuration so that it is saved, so that we know the pointer. But if you don't do these things, then if you are ready with your compilation step, the compiler instance goes away and it will destroy the uh, abstract syntax tree context and the file manager. And this is a pitfall you should avoid, you, you have to avoid by using these two lines. I don't know why for these uh, tasks there's no take uh, function, which uh, sometimes in some classes uh, is. Okay, so I am near the end of the talk of my talk today. I hope uh, you uh, got some impressions of uh, of all the obstacles uh, uh, we had to uh, solve in order to get a source-to-source -source transformation tool. Uh, with Clang running and the question here uh, which uh, I want to raise at the end is whether uh, Clang can become a suitable tool for source-to-source -source transformations uh, in the future that is if it is desired to get an uh, uh, okay to get a uh, syntax tree processing library inside uh, of uh, Clang. So what I mean is the S processing unit which I showed you at the beginning of my talk uh, if there is uh, if there are opportunities uh, to get this in uh, as a as a part of Clang. Well <coughs> uh, I already told about uh, some uh, implementation issues. Uh, we have a code base, we have an interface, uh, the statement editor interface which I found rather convenient to use 
and uh, I already told you that uh, the, that the implementation has to be refined, hugely refined. All in all, what I mean, um, in every case, we have to put some effort in the issue to get it uh, running finally. And uh, the question here is, uh, can we found or can can we uh, can, can we found a, a collaborative project which just is dedicated to a source to source component in in Clang? And in my opinion, uh, just uh, developing a source to source component uh, for nothing but being a source to source component is not enough here. What you need is some well, some sort of a cherry on the cake, you know, uh, that is. There must be more than just, just a source-to-source -source component. And I just want to give you uh, three possible directions, three, possible, three possibility, possibilities, so that you uh, see which kind of project may need source-to-source -source, uh, transformations. And then uh, maybe we can meet uh, afterwards and uh, discuss opportunities. Uh, uh, if and how a project, a collaborative project, uh, maybe can be founded, where those to those transformation is one of the parts, but uh, only one of the parts. Okay, the first one uh, we already has uh, seen a talk about OpenMP today. It means uh, if you have annotated C++, that is um, pragmas or uh, in uh, in the next years, maybe there will be also C++ attributes there. Uh, sorry, there are already them. Yes, there so. yes, yes, I know, but uh, they are not built in oh, Clang. Uh, yes, yes, and uh, so that users are uh, able to extend Clang rather easily, or yes, to extend or tweak it, or more or less tweak it, and. Uh, then we can uh, uh, found a project where we use user-defined pragmas, transform uh, based on the pragmas, the abstract syntax tree, have a source code then and then uh, deliver it uh, to another compiler or whatever. Uh, then we can go one step further and do not use uh, annotated C++ but extended C++. Uh, there's, for instance, a UPC Clang project. Um, these, uh, the people there are very interested in a uh, source-to-source -source compiler so that UPC uh, gets translated, transformed, or compiled into plain C or C++. This is another sorry, uh, unified parallel C that is um, um, it comes from the high performance com computing uh, where you have um, uh, uh, partition at global address space that is something uh, contrary to MPI, uh, I would say so. So you have MPI with its message passing between, distrib between uh, memory regions, uh, all is dis distributed, and then you have Pegas uh, where it is also distributed, but uh, the model is different. You don't do pass messages, but also access memory of uh, remote locations uh, dire more directly and asynchronously. And then uh, you have UPC, which uh, can deal with this by uh, extending C. It, uh, it extends the array, the array constructs uh, in particular. And um, finally, you can go even one step further and say, I, I have a user-defined language, uh, for instance, a domain-specific language. Uh, these languages are uh, rather a hot topic currently in the HPC community. And then you can uh, write your own parser, your uh, uh, user-defined parser, generate your internal representation. And from the internal, from your own repo, internal representation, you could create a, an abstract syntax tree of Clang if you had an uh, appropriate uh, processing library, like the statement editor class, which I 
just introduced uh, at the beginning. And again, uh, in the end, you have some target source code which you can deliver to Clang or GCC or whatever compiler you have on your target platform. Okay, that's it. Uh, let me zoom out from uh, the code back to the strategy. And as I already said, if you are interested in a project, maybe of this kind, maybe of another kind, then uh, I'd like to talk with you and of course if you have any questions now then you feel free to ask me. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question on uh, slide 22. You had this. Uh, so you got this cloning the expression. Yes. So, but on this slide, we only see uh, gets left hand side. So, this is not actually a real clone. After your talk about cloning and using tree transform, I was a bit curious about what's going on there. Was this transform expression is the clone? Yes, this is the clone because. All okay, so the transform expression is the implementation of the cloning facility. Yes. Ah, okay, now it's big it. because always the build returns true. Uh, okay. In the in the, in the base class, uh, always rebuild returns false, and you can overwrite it and return it true, and then always rebuild means every node is uh, created new from the, from the sketch model. Okay. Always. Thanks. So, yes. And what I do actually, what I have not shown here is, I call uh, in the, u the the actual use case I call the transform compound assignment operator directly so I don't call anything else because I know how this is implemented I implemented this by myself and then I go uh, beyond here there is one glitch here if in the left-handed side there is another compound assignment operator which would be uh, well not very nice for me but which is a rather uh, very rare case I would say at least, uh, then this would break because then uh, this would clone this again, and it, uh, it would not clone the compound assignment any uh, at this level. But it would go to some sort of recursion, of recursion. But it's protected against uh, Murphy, not against Machiavelli. <laughs> Hi, um, so I'm a Clang developer. Um, the justification we usually give for not supporting this sort of transformation is that when you want to generate source, you're usually falling into either the case of you want to generate source which a human is going to maintain, yes. in which case doing this sort of thing is problematic because you lose um, macros, you lose uh, comments, you lose various bits of information which are useful when maintaining the source. Yes. And so for that purpose, we generally suggest that people generate uh, rewrites um, and we, we have some um, some good technology for doing that and uh, the, the C++11 migration stuff works well for that and for people who are doing uh, more code generation type things because the Clang AST is so high level you end up having to do a lot of work to, to understand the semantics of, of the code in order to transform it and so we find IR transforms often work better. C can you uh, explain um, whether you think this is a generally valuable way of proceeding, and if so, why? Um, to the f to your first point, um, I only had 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a facility to rewrite macros uh, when, we, when it comes to the rewriting, but I did not talk today about the rewriting. I just talked about the uh, transformation of the tree. Um, we also have a facility to uh, rewrite comments and to even to, to put comments on, on other lines. So you, you, have, uh, you know what's, uh, what's, uh, what's the transformer actually thought or the, the implementer of the transformer. Um, and uh, to the general, more general question, I think it's a valuable way to, to have a source-to-source -source, uh, transformator. We come from the HPC community, from the high-performance community, where you uh, where you have code which has to run on very different platforms and uh, when you develop this you don't know 
to which platform you want to develop it. And the vector, especially the vectorizing part, was very important. We were one of the first able to vectorize for Xeon 5, for instance. Yes, we just uh, put the instruction set in the configuration and uh, we could run it even on platforms where there were no ICC compiler. Yes, and we con could try it out. Yeah. Okay, so um, one more thing then. <coughs> You, it's obviously been a lot of pain for you to get to yes. something which actually works here. Yes. What do you think, um, uh, do you have any thoughts on what Interface Clang should provide in order to make this sort of thing um, more straightforward? Um, yes, uh, first uh, documented way to do it. Yes, <laughs> because uh, currently if you, if you ask about it, then you always get the answer in this immutable. Yeah, okay. It's okay, uh, but uh, it would be better if you have a way to say, yeah, use this or use that, use tree transform. It's a lot of pain, but uh, use it, <laughs> for instance. Yes. Um, and second, something, uh, uh, some convenience wrappers, like the statement iterator class, for instance. Yes. So, yes, uh, but I think uh, the, first, uh, the, the first step would be the important one here. To, to get out of, uh, of the thinking, it is immutable into a thinking. We could make it mutable, uh, but with our own means. Not with my means, which are actually broken. Okay. Well, we've got time for one last question then. Uh. You just, just showed how you to replace statements. Do you also support declare, um, replacing declarations, like changing the f a signature of a function? Uh, no, I don't change uh, signatures of functions now. Uh, as I uh, told you, or as I mentioned uh, shortly, um, uh, we work on the function uh, body level. Yeah, but you also heard about uh, inlining. Yes. If you if you inline a function, then you have of course replace the uh, parameter variable declarations with the uh, variables that are actually uh, de delivered to the function, which are to the function. Or do I understand you? Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much, Olaf.